Hello and welcome once again to uh, More Gay Tandrology. It's David Mills here and I want today to talk about penis filler or penis fat transfer. Which one to choose? Penis filler or penis fat transfer? Now, this video really is has been a long time in the making. I've touched on this issue in other videos, but I thought it was about time to make a definitive video on uh, on this subject because it, it, it comes up all the time at Morgate Andrology when we get inquiries from guys who want a penis enlargement but they're not really sure sometimes whether to choose penis filler a more temporary fix to uh, thicken the penis or whether to go with a more permanent option which is the girth fat transfer so I thought it would be a good idea to uh, kick off uh, this next section of videos with this very subject. We haven't I haven't made any for a while, and I know you guys have been asking uh, about that. But uh, we have been quite busy actually in uh, lockdown, and we had a lot of surgeries to perform uh, because we were closed from the uh, about the end of March to uh, the end of June. So we had a lot of catching up to do, but uh, I think we're on top of things now. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to making uh, a lot more videos <clears throat> about um, penis enlargement and uh, also other aspects of andrology procedures. But let's start with this one. So when guys uh, contact us about having a penis enlargement, one of the first questions we always ask is, do you want the penis made longer? Do you want the penis made longer? Because that tends to set us off on a definitive path. Now, most of the time, the answer to that question is yes. Most guys do want the penis made longer. And if that's the case, then uh, nearly all, in all cases, guys will have uh, a, a, a fat transfer to increase their penis girth. Why is that? Because the procedure to make the penis longer is a minor surgery procedure. Um, we divide a ligament called a suspensory ligament, which when this is done, it slides the penis forward between one to two inches more. And that's the extra length that you can get from uh, from that procedure. And it increases the penis length when the penis is flaccid, when it's soft. So even before you have an erection, your penis will look big. So if you're going to have, if you want to have the penis made longer with a ligamentosis procedure, then it makes complete sense to have a fat transfer for the girth. Why? Because when you are having the uh, ligamentosis procedure, this is going to take about 45 minutes or so in the operating theatre. And to do the girth procedure with a fat transfer may only take another 20, 25 minutes more. So from a, from a cost perspective, it only costs a bit more to have the uh, penis girth increased with a fat transfer while you're having the ligamentosis. And the second reason to choose a fat transfer is a, because this procedure is permanent. So when we increase the penis length, we put something in the space that we create when we've divided the ligaments called a silicon buffer. You won't know it's there, but this will prevent the two ends of the ligaments from joining together. So the lengthening is permanent. With a girth fat transfer, after the initial absorption of fat, which will be about 30% or so, can be as much as 50%, but generally speaking around 30%, the fat that remains will remain under normal circumstances, you will always have that fat. So length and girth surgery is a permanent procedure. And if you're having the penis lengthened, then you should seriously consider, in our opinion, uh, a surgical girth fat transfer at the same time. 
Now, I will say that in, in, in rare occasions, some guys simply do not have any fat. You know, they have a body like the rest of us can only dream of. There's not an ounce of fat on their body. That's a problem when it comes to a fat transfer, of course. So in rare cases, it might be that you'll, you'll have a ligamentosis to increase the penis length, and then you will have fillers later to increase the penis girth. But that's rare. 99% of the time, guys that come for penis enlargement, they want their penis made longer, and they want their penis made thicker, and they will have a ligamentosis with a girth fat transfer. Now, what about penis fillers? Well, uh, penis fillers are very easy to get done because it doesn't involve any surgery. So they do have uh, their, um, shall we say, upsides because you come into the clinic, uh, our urologist will numb your penis with a local anesthetic and then the uh, dermal filler is injected into the penis. And this will thicken your penis with, uh, within an hour. It takes about an hour to do the treatment. And you can go back home, go back to work. There's very little downtime. So they do tick a lot of boxes. However, the big drawback with penis fillers is that they, the results don't last. You know, they're temporary in nature, just the same as when they're injected into the face to fill in wrinkles and plump up the lips and things like that. They're not meant to last, and indeed they don't. So you need to have top-up treatments. Now, these top-up treatments will um, depend, or when you have them, will depend on the type of dermal filler that you choose. And uh, uh, hyaluronic acid, the filler that's used uh, to augment the penis, um, has varying um, uh, longevity depending on which one uh, you have it can be anything from six months to two years now in truth um, you know we see very little point in having any dermal filler to increase your penis girth that lasts less than two years that just doesn't make any sense there are lots of cheap dermal fillers now here in the UK that are being used for uh, penis enlargement that last a matter of months and most of them have no track record at all in the penis. Uh, the one brand that I think is fair to say has uh, uh, a track record across the world in terms of penis enlargement is the Juvederm brand. They have a brand, uh, they have a particular filler called Volux, V-O-L-U-X, Volux, which most of the time is being injected into the cheeks. If you've got, you know, if you've lost weight in your ch cheeks and you're looking a bit gaunt, it plumps up the cheeks. And this one works really well in the penis and has a duration of uh, about two years. And uh, that's the one that we use most at Moorgate. There seems little point in having a filler that only lasts a matter of months because you have to keep going back and you're spending, um, you're just spending more money. Um, so, uh, cost consideration. <clears throat> this is obviously a big factor when you're looking at uh, penis enlargement. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, certainly in the short term, if we're talking about pure girth, then penis fillers are certainly cheaper than a, than a surgical uh, girth fat transfer. Um, but in the medium to long term, penis fillers are far more expensive than uh, a girth fat transfer. Because when you've added up, uh, you know, probably after the second uh, top up of a penis filler, after the second top up, then you will have spent the, the equivalent amount of money as it would have cost you for a penis fat transfer, which of course is permanent. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, pound for pound, um, a girth fat transfer is considerably cheaper medium to long term than a penis filler. Now, having said that, you know, if you have uh, deep pockets and you don't mind having the penis fillers, maybe you find them really convenient to get done with 
very little effort or downtime, then they can be a great way to increase uh, your penis girth. So lots girth, so long as you're prepared to have the uh, top ups. Now, I'm going to let you into a little secret, and that is that I can tell you about 30 to 40% of patients at Morgate Andrology that begin with penis fillers will go on to have a, a girth fat transfer, usually at the first or second top-up time. Because they come back and they'll say, well, you know, this was really good. Yeah, I like the result, but I think I'm ready now for something more permanent. So, and of course you can do that. Um, there's no problem if you started with penis filler and you want something more permanent, then you can move on to have a penis uh, girth fat transfer uh, at the top of time. Um, I hope that's given you some insight into um, uh, how to decide whether you want to have your penis thickened with dermal filler or with a fat transfer. There are pros and cons of both treatments, um, but I think the the takeaway message is, you know, be acutely aware of what the costs are and the ongoing costs. And uh, the big one really is, do you want the penis lengthened? That usually is the deciding factor. And almost all guys who want their penis made longer will choose a penis girth fat transfer. Now, I can hear some... Uh, uh, some that would say, "Well, hang on a minute. Uh, don't, doesn't the doesn't the uh, or don't the penis fillers make the penis longer?" Well, if you had enough filler to the penis, it can um, add a little weight to the shaft and make it look a bit longer. But it's not really a lengthening procedure per se. And of course, as the filler absorbs. Uh, then uh, the penis will shorten again. So again, you know, if you're if you're considering uh, uh, having your penis lengthened, then the only way to do that is with a ligamentosis procedure. So there we go. I hope that's given you some insight into um, uh, things you should be considering and thinking about when you want your penis made thicker. Um, if you have any questions, please do uh, get in touch with us here at Morgate Andrology. Or if you have any questions, you can also put them in the comments, of course. Um, but that's all from me today. I hope that's been helpful and I'll look forward to speaking to you soon back here at Morgate. That's all from me. Bye for now.